good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video so we're gonna check out how adam would book kofi mania now i know you guys have been requesting for a while now since i started doing reactions to parts fun known uh to check out his how he would have booked different wrestler series i have checked out some of uh his videos pertaining to how he would book certain characters and wrestlers in the past just off camera this will be my first time doing it on camera for you guys because usually these videos are kind of long so we're gonna check this out man appreciate all the love and support you guys have been just showing so much love and support on the channel man we're almost at well we'll get to 70k you know fairly soon you know saying we're on that road we're on that grind to 70k i'll probably break this video up into two parts like i said because it is kind of long so i'll do part one probably like maybe the, the first half and then part two for the second half so definitely if you guys want me to continue the series let me know i definitely will and uh let's get right into this bad boy man i think this is gonna be a good one i want to see how he would have did kobe man i'm sure he would have booked uh way better uh way better in into how it all culminated with kofi being destroyed by brock lesnar in like 15 seconds or some crazy stuff day in all respects but one don't you tell me not to be sour i was born sour then i became a wrestling fan it got worse since then <laughs> kofi mania was one of those flukes of yeah. wrestling the kind of accidental lightning in a bottle events that reminds you that a wrestling is a living breathing product that still has the capacity to evolve in surprising and emotionally resonant ways and b wwe really doesn't like it when that happens mm -hmm. WWE's like a parent who books a, a really nice holiday for themselves, but then their kid brings an adorable puppy home and then suddenly they have to make all these new plans on the fly. And so the parents just try to subtly and quietly <laughs> drown the puppy and then the kid starts crying. So they hang the towel, the puppy off. I say, okay, there you go, play with it. We do have to catch that plane though. Hey, look over there. We just, why, why, keep looking. Why weren't you done? In one sense, I understand Ryanair doesn't do refunds, but also Kofi Kingston first debuted in mm -hmm. WWE in 2008 on ECW as a man committed to Jamaica's crazy and wouldn't let the fact that he was African rather than Jamaican stop him from doing that. Now, to mm -hmm. be fair to the big dub and spoilers, I won't be fair to the big dub, a lot in this video. That was actually the gimmick that Kofi had on the independent circuit. He was, mm. being Jamaican was his idea before oh, wow. joining the company. So Didn't know in 2009, he got hit on the head probably and became from Ghana, it's always happening, and was promoted to an upper mid card fighting for Raw on bragging rights, eating the pin, sure, but then getting involved in the main event of John Cena versus Randy Orton, which translated into a feud between the Viper and mm -hmm. Kofi, which was a big deal. Kofi yeah, was. was feuding with a former WWE champion, having big hero segments like that huge boom drop from the railing in November and then the push ended in a way that could best be described as stupid in a triple threat match yeah definitely man they uh that's politicking at its finest right there if you know the situation with what happened with kofi kingston's d push politicking at its finest randy orton at his finest <laughs> Between John Cena, Randy Orton, and Kofi Kingston, again, look at him in the mix with those two. Kofi botched the finish of the match. Yeah. Orton blew his top, and so the story goes. The That's real life happened. heat cost Kingston a penciled money in the bank victory that year. And Damn. over the next decade, Kofi became an entrenched. I didn't know he was going to be money in the bank winner potentially that year. Oh, man. Because people were starting to really get behind Kofi. I remember this. Oh, man. Damn, that sucks, bro. But it came full circle in the end, so...
mid-carder. A charismatic mid-carder, absolutely, but a mid-carder seemingly for life. He became yeah. part of the New Day in 2015. They got over like crazy as obnoxious heels before Kofi settled into a reliably lucrative comedy act with easy, utterly convincing friendship chemistry with Big E Langston, now called Big E, and Xavier Woods, now called King Woods which is lovely. They could pull match of the night tag matches out of their ass with minimal yep. prep. New Day versus the Usos was the best feud of 2017. And people didn't expect more from Kofi. And that was, it was fine. It was fine. A position in the company that worked that no one really questioned until February 2019 mm -hmm. and the lightning in the bottle. Elimination. This is why I love like booking like this, like, Sometimes on the fly booking, you got to go with what's hot. I wish WWE would do this more. Going with what's hot. And Kofi was at the right place at the right time. And he was over. He was the most over he had ever been since feuding with Randy Orton all those many years ago. He was over. People wanted to see him win, be the guy. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's just one of those things in wrestling when, when, when the crowd sees it, you got to hop on it. It's always best to hop on it and to wait later when it, the hype has already died down. Nation Chamber was fast approaching, featuring a chamber match for Daniel Bryan, sorry, the new Daniel Bryan's mm -hmm. WWE Championship. In that match, Samoa Joe, Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, the new Daniel Bryan, and Mustafa Ali. On the February 12th episode of SmackDown, a gauntlet match was to be held to determine who would enter the Elimination Chamber last, with one issue was that Ali suffered a bad concussion at a house show in Indiana and was pulled from SmackDown and Elimination Chamber entirely. It was announced he'd be replaced by a member of the New Day. And when that was first announced, be honest now, no one cared. Then the gauntlet mm -hmm. match happened. Kofi wrestled Daniel Bryan with time to spare, which by the way, is a really good way to make someone look good. He held his own against D-Bry, wrestled mm -hmm. a style we hadn't seen from him in quite a while before, holy sh pinning the WWE Champion. Absolutely huge. He yep. went on to wrestle for ages after that, pinning Jeff Hardy, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles with commentary asking, is this mm -hmm. the best Kofi Kingston of his- they, Oh, it, they, it, I get some people saying, oh, pinning a champion shouldn't happen. I understand. I get that. I totally, totally, totally get that. The champion should not be losing unless he's about to drop the title. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. But at the same time, it did more for Kofi in the long run because people really started to buy in. Whoa, where's, where's this Kofi been? You know what I'm saying? We've never seen this type of Kofi Kingston before. You know what I'm saying? His career that we are seeing, the mm. best bit of that match, AJ Styles telling an exhausted Kofi to yep. just stop. It's mm -hmm. all right. It's over. And Kofi shoving AJ away, saying, no, I've waited too long. Yep. I've waited 11 oh, that years. Was a good moment. And everyone at home realizing that that's right. That's that it. He's right. Yep. On one night, Kofi's survival allowed WWE to tell an organic story, one yeah. steeped in actual tangible history where the pieces just fell into their lap. A story that shifted the audience's perspective of someone who'd been a mid-carder for a full decade. It was an exhilarating moment. Again, a moment of living, adapting wrestling. And the audience thought, you know what? We're not going to let this one go. Kofi yep. Mania built steam with perfect under mm -hmm. booking at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view before falling off the rails a little bit yeah. on the road to WrestleMania itself. It was mostly fine. It wasn't exactly Daniel Bryan's run to the top in 2014 yeah. where the plans literally changed at the last possible moment. Like even before Fastlane, Kofi Mania was the plan going into WrestleMania 35. It's just that the way they went about it was a bit weird. Mm -hmm. Like Vince didn't like Kofi. Why don't you like Kofi, Vince? Vince said, and honestly, the lack of cogent reasoning behind Vince yeah. repeatedly stripping Kofi of opportunities, it just yeah. made the whole thing look like Vince was an old Karen shouting at yeah. an African man in the street whilst also reassuring everyone that, oh, I'm not racist. Yeah. 
they 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 were going with that angle kind of Daniel Bress, da- Daniel Bress, Daniel Bryan esque. Um, but it, it just it didn't make sense, you know. It was like we get it, you're you're trying to put Kofi down, and we're gonna want to root for him to overcome the odds. You just gotta make it make sense. Put some a little bit more thought behind your process of why you don't want him to be the guy, the main event one uh, at WrestleMania. Why? What's the reason? I've got one black friend, and his name is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Mm -hmm. However you look at it, not explaining why the villain is doing things beyond sheer villainy, it's not great. A few months and many gauntlet matches later, Kofi got his Daniel Bryan branded WrestleMania moment against, quite appropriately, Daniel Bryan himself, wrestling the new Daniel Bryan with time to spare, which by the way, is a really good way to have a great WrestleMania match. Kofi pinned him, was crowned WWE champion, and it was genuinely, unutterably lovely and then eh, yeah just yeah yeah like kofi held the title the wwe title i remind you for 180 days and it's mostly just meh that's the sad thing about that title reign it should have been more than just meh it it booking you can get to the point where everything goes right. But now, now that you got that person to that that pinnacle, that peak, you got to make sure however you book them makes sense. One, eight, zero. And the number of pay-per-views that he main evented as champion, well, it was one of those three numbers. And it wasn't the eight. And it wasn't the one. Kofi Kingston, WWE champion, closed the show on pay-per-view zero times yes. like not once be beat ko at money in the bank didn't main event then because of saudi ethics ko was shoved out of the way and downgraded to dolph ziggler at super showdown and then again at stomping ground like dolph ziggler it, dolph he i like dolph ziggler i'm not one of those people that hates dolph like he's he's good but he's also like the angel of death for new exciting stars isn't he mm-hmm. nakamura At Extreme Rules, Kofi retained against Samoa Joe. Again, fair enough, but didn't main event. It was pretty good. And then they finally moved onto a feud with a bit of weight and reason for being behind it. 10 years after his- That was the feud I was looking forward to the most because of the realism, the story behind it. What really happened? He's doing Randy Orton, you know, is kind of one of the main reasons why things didn't go the way they should have happened many years ago. Of course, yeah, Kofi botched the ending to, you know, a match, but at the same time, politicking really kind of ruined Kofi's momentum. So I'm thinking if they're going to do this, do this right. I was all for it push was derailed at the hands of the viper kofi and randy orton fought at SummerSlam, and the match oh the match ended because randy looked at kofi's kids and kofi went into a pancake panic and they fought to a a double count out and it was the worst thing fun fact at SummerSlam the year before the wwe championship match also didn't main event, had a deeply personal feud end with a rubbish non-finish when the champion got a rage on when his family were mentioned and kicked oh. too much ass and everyone hated that as well. It's just the same mistakes over and over again. What's the f-ing point of being alive? At Clash of Champions, Kofi beat Randy Orton in a slow match, by which point no one really cared because mm-hmm. the Summer Sam thing was so sh- And then, mm-hmm. On the October 4th episode uh, of SmackDown, the debut of SmackDown on Fox to pop the network execs and set up a Saudi Arabia blood money past its prime UFC feud, which would result in one single terrible match. Brock uh, Lesnar defeated Kofi Kingston in eight seconds to win the WWE Championship, ending Kingston's 180 day reign in a single move. A single move, bro. And look, I understand why they did it. I know they wanted to do a big thing for SmackDown's big day. They were using the title change to promote for the future. And I've been pretty public about the fact that I do quite like the presentation of Brock Lesnar as this unassailable evil twat with a belt. But 
It was how they did it. Yeah. Which is just so insulting. Yes, yeah. eight seconds, one move. That sucks. But what sucks more was literally the next week on SmackDown, seven days later, Kofi immediately slid down the card. Yeah, he... That was my thing. I will never understand how a person loses a goddamn match, right? Where they lost the title. They lost the championship they've been wor look, working so hard to get for almost 10 years. They lost it. In eight seconds. They come back out the next week like nothing ever happened. What? What? All right. Okay. Appearing in a segment with New Day, holding pancakes and smiling, promoting Susan G. Komen, having a meaningless six-man tag with the New Day versus the OC. He was done. And at no point, literally no point, Kofi cut a promo yeah, on did. the show. He cut a promo on that SmackDown. At no point did Kofi mention the fact that he was WWE champion seven f***ing days earlier. Nor did he even slightly express an interest in getting the championship. The high point of an 11-year career, he's waited too long back. There was a brief reference to it at the Royal Rumble when he turned up to a big bloody f***ing pop, lest we forget, to challenge mm -hmm. Brock in the Rumble match before being soundly defeated yet again. It, it was, it's maddening. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, Jinder Mahal got more aftercare when his WWE Championship reign ended. And that was something that well, I and some other people, it, that's something we actually want to forget. Not everyone, mm -hmm. though, because some of you a wankers. But no, Kofi was done. His character suffered yeah, overnight was... amnesia and his aspirations were never mentioned again. Nope. After suffering with the puppy that their kid brought home for almost a full calendar year, WWE, the parents finally managed to put a bullet in the puppy's head. And when their kid got upset about it, they were like, I mean, you're lucky you even had a puppy at That's all. That's exactly and also, what happened. You never had a puppy. Now, how yep. about Kane Velasquez? Yep. Should we go on holiday with him? It'll be sure. <laughs> Bollocks. Bollocks to it all. Yeah, man. Let was... me have a go. All right, man. Let's see what you can come up with, Adam. I know it's way much better. Now, look, let's not look at things happened. with rose tinted glasses. Kofi's WWE Championship reign wasn't very good. Some of that is down to the fact that like AJ Styles' long run with the WWE Championship the year before, and to some extent, CM Punk's 434 day title reign before that, that during his tenure, the WWE title was treated as an upper mid card belt, a combination of lesser opponents in some cases. So, so I do like you, Dolph WWE non-finishes to sell mm -hmm. the next pay-per-view booking, but also in the ring, Kofi wasn't that dynamic a champion. Sorry, sorry. He, it, it wasn't very good for a combination of reasons. See, mm. after the Daniel Bryan match at Mania, the matches didn't reach the same quality. Kofi's great, he really is. But the chase was over. The mm. magical mm. moment had been achieved. And without that contentious relationship between WWE and its fans, without the fans feeling like WWE was denying them something that they'd mm. always wanted, which is when the fans are most vocal in this era anyway, the enthusiasm for Kofi Kingston, WWE Champion, just gradually ebbed away. I understand that. Mm. But that also shouldn't be treated like an inevitability because Kofi is great, for one. And second, it doesn't excuse the fact that Kofi got no follow-up. Nope, like, he didn't. Y you've made a new WWE Champion. He was champion for 180 days. And even without the racial optics, which a lot of people will reject, of the whitest, most Aryan man you can find reclaiming the belt on Fox and the black guy just immediately going back mm -hmm. to knowing his place with a smile, even yeah. without that lens, it's just objectively shit storytelling. Yeah. WWE, you are asking us to watch your show every single week based on the consequences of people's actions and how the characters you're presenting to us are going to react to their circumstances. No matter how you look at it, this kind of booking actively hurts the audience's desire to tune yep. in to see what their favorite characters are up to because their favorite characters don't act like people. I mean, that's, that's the thing about when it comes to uh, trying to make these characters seem convincing, 
a normal human being would not just be okay after losing a championship they've been trying to get for over 10 years. They just wouldn't go back to being, oh, it's cool, bro. They wouldn't even not, like, mention it. They would say something. I lost the championship. I'm going to try to find, bro. I'm going to try to find a way to get my opportunity back to take care of the job. Something. You don't just go back to throwing pancakes when that happened. I was like, oh, yeah, Kofi's done. I didn't even care for him no more because it was like, all right, well, it was fun while it lasted. They did him dirty, but it was fun while it lasted. Who's next? And then you got to wonder, should I even care about the next person that I want to see make it to the top? They make it to the top, and then then what? Are they going to get booked correctly? Who knows? But honestly, like this is why most of the audience doesn't stick around. So that's the point of this booking. Give Kofi more opponents to play into his strengths, have the WWE Championship main event some f***ing pay-per-views, and have mm -hmm. the reign end in a way that treats the character of Kofi Kingston with a little bloody dignity. We start in the build up to WrestleMania 35. The only things that change here are, one, Mustafa Ali does not compete for the WWE Championship at Fastlane. Instead, it's just Kevin Owens versus Daniel Bryan. And two, let's clear up Vince's motivations a little, shall we? Instead of just avoiding the issues and just relying mm -hmm. on B plus player to take care of it, have Vince actually make it clear that, look, Kofi, I like you. You're, you've been great over the last 10 years. You know, thanks for your service. But if you were going to be a main event star, we're looking at a decade, Kofi. You would have done it already. Now, mm. you don't seem to understand. I'm all for opportunities, pal. But this is WrestleMania we're talking about. The biggest show of the year. We are talking about the WWE mm -hmm. Championship match at WrestleMania. Now, I'm sorry, but... It, it is too big a spotlight, and I am not willing to risk you challenging for that title, making my show lesser than. I'm sorry. That there you go. Great. Simple. That's simple. That simple. It doesn't have to go. It doesn't have to cross the line. I like that. That, that was simple. Straight to the point. A, hey, you've had your opportunity. Now, you know, I don't think this is the, you know, the time for that. I got to find... Uh, someone that I feel like will really bring that big match feel. I'm sorry, Kofi. At this present moment, you don't. Is that The logical reasoning is you will hurt WrestleMania with this crusade of yours, so know your place. Let's mm -hmm. move on. And Kofi cool. says, no, after 11 years of doing just that, this might be my only chance. I won't let it go. So then we have... Kofi winning the bell at WrestleMania, like it happened, lovely moment, not changing a thing. Except that in the aftermath of the show, Daniel Bryan takes out all of his aggression on Eric Rowan, fires him from his retinue, breaks his arm, loses the plot. After WrestleMania, big celebration for Kofi with the New Day. And instead of immediately going into a champion versus champion mm -hmm, match, a unification match, no less, with Seth Rollins on Raw, which is incredibly dumb because, A, we've just seen two baby faces win their belts and we don't mm -hmm. want to see either of them lose their belt just yet. And B, there's absolutely zero chance of that match ending any other way than disappointingly. Yeah. And hey, look, a disappointing finish. Just yeah. a bad old thing, like straight out of the gate for Kofi's title reign. It all right, man, I'm going to stop it right there. This so far uh, has been entertaining. First half of this video. I'm going to drop the second half of this video later on um, sometime this week. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, but appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.